G'day guys, John here, Chief Instructor with FPV Australia. Welcome back to Drone Sense. Today I'd like to talk to you about these little buggers, lithium polymer batteries, and these little buggers. Same, same, different, different. This is old school conventional lithium polymer battery, been around for a while, we've been flying with these for, for uh, uh, quite a while now. These are just chemical, there's no electronics in this battery whatsoever. All the drone racers that are out there watching, you're all flying the same thing, just smaller. Uh, and they range from you know, two cell, three cell, four cell, six cell. What does that mean? Well, I won't go into all that detail here, but it's just the amount of cells in the battery to make up one pack. This is exactly the same thing, only DJI have included some electronics in the, uh, in the top of it, and we'll get to that in a minute. First, let's talk about lithium polymer. Why are we using lithium polymer-based products? Well, it's all about energy density. So things like lead acid versus lithium polymer or nickel cadmium NICADs versus lithium polymer is for the same amount of energy, in other words, to get the same flight time, the lithium polymer battery is lighter. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, and it delivers current at a, at a good rate that we want it to, I guess. So that, that's it in a nutshell. It's, it's all about energy density. But the trade-off with these things is because they can deliver a lot of energy in a short space of time and then we pack a lot of energy into a little light product. They're volatile, they're dangerous. In what way? Let me explain. Let's go back to the conventional LiPo. If we plug this into a LiPo charger and we must use a conventional, a, 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 a specific LiPo charger, not a conventional 12 volt plug pack, it has to be a charger designed to charge LiPo batteries. If we plug all this in, and, uh, and we, we put it on charge and we decide to disappear and go down the shop and buy a Coke and a hot dog. And for whatever reason, the charger decides it's, it's not gonna stop charging the battery. It's not the battery itself that fails, but the charger itself's little circuitry fails to recognize the battery's full. It continues to feed power into the battery. And at some point the battery says, I've had enough. And the result is a lithium polymer fire. What does that look like? I'm going to show you a little snippet of a video. Uh, this video is going to demonstrate a very similar process. They've hooked a lithium polymer battery up to a car battery just to show you what happens if we keep feeding energy into a lithium polymer battery. Now this is only a small one, probably half the size of this, not even as big as this. And you'll see how the fire, what happens when the fire goes off. Have a look at this video. Input battery low voltage. So you can see the fire is not a smolder, it's, it's an ignition, it goes off. And if that is in your lounge room or sitting on the coffee table or next to the lounge or next to your bed and you're down the road getting your hot dog, you could see the result, right? There's not enough noise being, being said in this industry about lithium polymer batteries. We're all worried about drones hitting aircraft and, and drones hitting people and flying over populace and all that stuff. No one's talking about these things. And I've got a big growing list of clients who've lost everything from cars, boats, houses, bedrooms. In fact, sadly, not that long ago, I had a gentleman in my classroom who decided to share a story that his mate died in a house fire that was started by a lithium polymer battery. It doesn't get any worse than that. The chances, the likelihood and the consequence, the likelihood it's slim, but the consequence for that poor fella was ultimate. So I wanna to talk to you about how we handle these things, how we charge them, how we store them, I've got guys that have lost sheds, put a LiPo battery on charge, went inside, make a cup of coffee, the whole shed and the cars and everything that was in it, gone. There was a shop in southwestern Sydney who remained nameless, if you're watching, Michael, hello. <laughs> uh, engineer put a battery on charge in the morning uh, and I think actually went to the, to the toilet or, or to the next room or wherever he went and the result was the whole shop went up, burnt the whole shop down, they're now in another shop because that one's charcoal. I had a gentleman who put a, a client of mine who put a LiPo battery on charge. Uh, he told us in the classroom and he was backing out, looked down the hallway at a window in the garage, apparently we can look down the hallway and, and smoke pouring out of the spare bedroom where the LiPo battery was on charge. Um, 
I don't make this stuff up. We had a, a, a client who um, went flying, didn't, uh, didn't use a particular battery, put it in the backpack, put it in the canopy of the truck, and on the way home, it went off by itself. Yes, these things go off by themselves. It's not just purely when they're charging, they have the ability to go off by themselves. The chances are slim but the consequences are great. If you've just gone flying, you've got four of these, you've only used two, there's two fully charged, you tuck it under your bed in the backpack, if that one that went off wasn't in the back of the truck and it was in the under the bed later that night, well, we'd be having a very different conversation. I did a lecture in a school where I was giving this particular lecture about LiPo batteries because I'm, I'm, really, I'm a real big advocate for LiPo safety. And one of the kids put his hand up in the classroom and said, uh, our house burnt down because we put a phantom battery on charge and went outside to play. And by the time they realized what was happening and the fire brigade turned up, it took the whole house. We saw hoverboards recently. Same, same thing, charges failing to stop and off goes the lipo and burn. They got banned, certain models of those. We've seen uh, uh, the, the, the Galaxy on, on aircraft. Yeah, those batteries were going nuts and catching fire. So it's, it's, it's a real thing. So let me talk to you about these first. Because most of you are gonna be flying, and watching this are flying probably a, a DJI product and they're all of a similar ilk. Inside this battery, there's some circuitry. It's designed to look after the battery's chemical. I.e., you plug this into the DJI charger, the little circuitry in here starts flashing, it's doing its thing and flashing its lights and it's that that's charging the cells inside this pack. When the pack is full, under normal conditions, the battery circuit says, I've had enough, you've had enough, we shut down under normal conditions. But if it doesn't, then it keeps feeding battery, the battery power and the result is a LiPo fire and you, you saw what that looks like. So we don't wanna put these on charge and leave them unattended, disappear out, go to the shop, go mow the lawn. We don't wanna do that, we wanna stick around where we are charging these. And we also don't wanna charge them on the lounge, on the carpet, on the bed. We wanna charge them somewhere where if there is a problem, then it can be dealt with appropriately. Where is that? Somewhere where you don't have a lot of stuff that's flammable. Really good place, believe it or not, on your stove top. Put them on your, on your stove in your kitchen. If you're gonna have a fire in the house, that's probably the best place to have it. It's better than having it on the coffee table next to the lounge and the curtains, right? Um, in my workshop, we've got a steel line bench and there's not a lot of flammables around and we have a fire extinguisher handy. And we're always there. We don't leave them unattended. I get asked a lot, where do I charge when I travel? Because I might be in a motel. My, myself and my instructors travel this country uh, and we're charging batteries and a lot of them constantly. Where do we charge? Well, all of my instructors have been told that they are to charge the battery if they've got a kitchenette in the unit where they're staying, in the kitchenette or in the kitchen. Uh, if they don't have that, believe it or not, the shower recess. If we're gonna have a fire, all that glass and porcelain is probably the best place to have it. Um, we don't wanna have a fire in a motel room, especially on the little table or cabinet sitting beside the bed. It would not end well. So it's just, again, a little bit of forethought about where you might wanna charge these things in case, just if something decides to happen. If you Google LiPo fire, you'll see that they go off. They go off by themselves. I've got clients that have had them go off by themselves. So where do you store them? Well, we have a big steel box here that we affectionately call the bunker. And all of our LiPos are in that. What we're trying to do is contain that fire. Should a LiPo go nuts, we don't want something else catching fire. And if it's inside a box, then all things equal, God willing, the, the fire is contained inside that box and the next thing isn't burning. Uh, I certainly wouldn't shove these in my backpack and stick them under my bed or stick them in the cupboard. So mum and dad's out there, if you're watching this and, uh, and you're planning on buying little Billy a drone for Christmas or you already have, uh, think about where these are being stored and or charged. Have the conversation with him or her uh, that these things need to be dealt with appropriately. They're not like, you know, other charging type arrangements, little, little other bits and pieces that you might be charging around the house. These things need to be monitored when they're charged because they have the ability to go rogue and go nuts and you don't want that happening. If they're charging them in their bedroom, which I wouldn't recommend, but if they are, make sure they understand the risks, put a smoke detector maybe in the bedroom and please tell them not to leave these things charging unattended. I've spoken to guys who go, oh, I put them on charge overnight when I get to bed, so in the morning I wake up and they're, they're done. We had a, a fella in the classroom whose mate died in a house fire 
because he put a, 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 a LiPo battery on charge and went to bed. So please don't do that. Don't leave them unattended uh, charging. Make sure you monitor them uh, and, and look after them. Uh, another thing I want to mention about this circuit, inside this particular battery, and all the, the DJI batteries are similar, there's a discharge function. What happens is when you charge this full up and you don't use it, there's a timer inside this and you can set the timer inside the DJI Go app. There's a, you can set the, the time delay on when that happens. That will, the timer goes off and then the, the battery itself starts to discharge. And for those that know Newton's law about uh, energy cannot be destroyed nor, nor created, it's purely transformed. The battery circuit has to transform the energy trapped in this battery and get it out and transform it. And the only way it transforms is with heat. So a little heat sink comes on in here, the circuitry comes on and starts discharging the battery while you sleep with it tucked under your bed. If it goes and fails, well, we're having a different discussion. So maybe that's why they're going off by themselves. It's more the fact that the circuitry in the battery is failing when it's supposed to come on and discharge. There's a big breakdown and whatever happens, whoosh, off goes the battery. So again, think about where you're storing them and how you're charging them. It's really, really, really important. I've got a growing list of clients that are just losing things left, right and center and having scary moments because these things decide to go off. In the back of a ute, in, you know, in a garage, in a shop, it's, it's happening. So, and, and these are probably more stable, I think, than these, because there's no circuitry in here to go wrong. But anyway, the last thing I want to talk to you about is traveling. Again, lots of people are going to be doing Christmas shopping. It's October right now, so Christmas shopping will be happening very shortly, and mums and dads all over the country are going to be going to buy drones, whether it's the Mavic or the, the Spark or the Phantom Series or the Inspires or the M210s, and however big your budget can stretch. They're all using the same technology. Um, and I believe a lot of people will be traveling with drones on planes, even more so at Christmas time, going to visit Aunt Maisie in Melbourne, Darwin, Fiji, the, the Maldives, wherever it is you're going, Honolulu, Canada. If you wanna travel with a drone on a plane, there are laws and restrictions about what you can and can't do with these batteries on an aircraft. The first and most important thing I will say is, do not check these into the hold of the aircraft. In other words, don't pack them in your suitcase and send it off in the bag, in the bag drop. Not allowed. These are not allowed to travel in the hold of the plane. They must be carried on. Most of the airlines adhere to what's called the ICAO standard, International Civil Aviation Organization standard. Um, some go beyond that. So some make it more strict. I traveled up the top end not that long ago and they were even more strict and I had to jump through a, a bunch of flaming hoops to get my LiPos on the plane and I'm glad that we go through that because we need to be safe on aircraft. A LiPo fire at 35,000 feet on the way to Honolulu is not a fun experience for anyone. So what are the rules? Um, if you Google the dangerous goods policy for your airline, whether it's Virgin, whether it's Singapore Airlines, whether it's Qantas, whether it's any of those, any airline you're traveling on, they'll have a dangerous goods policy. Most of them adhere to the ICAO standard, but I implore you to check with the airline you're traveling on, first and foremost. How do you do that? Simply go to their website, find the contacts for dangerous goods, it's not hard to find, and send them an email and ask. But I'll tell you what the ICAO based standard is. Anything under 101 watt hours, these fall into this category because they're in the 80 watt hour mark. Anything under 101 watt hours, there's, there's no real limit as to how many you can carry on the plane up to, I guess, your carry on weight limits. But let's be sensible, they need to be packed appropriately. Don't just bundle these into a rucksack and walk on the aircraft with them. That's probably not a good idea. We want, when we travel, we, ours are in Pelican style cases, they're all individually foam slotted, they don't bang against each other, and they're flat. Don't travel with a stack of batteries fully charged because now you've got all that energy packed in the air and if it wants to get out, as we've seen in the video, well, we've got problems. If they're flat, they're less dangerous. So fly them all before you travel. You know, Get out there and fly your drone and set the DJI's Go apps on its lowest setting so they drain as much energy out of that battery as possible and then travel with them. Carry them on the plane. Do not check them in the hold. Uh, over 101 watt hours up to 160 watt hours and a battery that goes over 101 watt hours for example is a Inspire TB48. Um, if you're not sure what that is Google it and have a look. But all of the batteries will probably have it written on for the DJI product will have it written on the battery itself. You'll have to do the math for this old conventional style um, volts times amps equals watt hours. But anyway, uh, the TB48s for example you're only allowed two of them on the aircraft and you must get airline approval. Don't just rock up, 
You've got to tell the airline you've got them and you're only allowed to up to 160 watt hours. Again, travel with them flat, please. Less energy in the battery, the less dangerous it is. Uh, if you are over 160 watt hours, and what are they? Oh, the S1000 batteries, those old big house bricks and the old school type, type batteries, or some of the bigger drones. Uh, the Agris, for instance, those big chunky batteries, they can't fly. They can't go on a plane full stop. You'll have to transport them in another way. Again, please, doesn't matter how big your LiPo battery is, whether it's the Spark, whether it's the Tello, whether it's the, the, the Mavic, whether it's the Phantom, do not put them in your checked baggage and check them in. Please don't do that. You must carry them on the plane. For everyone's safety, carry them on the plane. I can't stress to you enough about traveling on aircraft with LiPo batteries. I travel a lot around this country. I rack up more miles than I care to count. And every time I sit in the aircraft and I'm on that plane and I'm thinking about who else is on the plane and what else is on the plane, I start to get a bit jittery. So please, if you are traveling with your drone, find out how to travel with it appropriately. Even the, the drone racers that might be traveling the country, you've probably already done it, but for those that might be new to it, even these conventional LiPo batteries have limits exactly the same as what I've just gone through. Under 101 watt hours, 1 to 160, and uh, 101 to 160, and over 160. So uh, do your research, look up the dangerous goods for your airline. Look, I hope that's given you a bit of an insight. In my classroom, we spend a, quite a number of hours on LiPo batteries. We break it right down and get, get our students a really good understanding of what they are playing with, because they can be dangerous. They have the ability to cause you grief. Likelihood consequence. The likelihood's slim, but the consequence will be great in the wrong conditions. Um, I don't need to go back over about burning houses down and everything else. I've, you know, we've, we've walked that path. I'll leave that up to you. To I, I get, I get chipped for scaremongering. Yeah, well, I've seen it firsthand, so Tom, you can they can say what they like. If you've got any questions, further questions about lithium polymer batteries, um, please feel free to email me. You can get me directly at john at fpvaustralia.com.au or training at fpvaustralia.com.au. That's the really easy one to remember, training at fpvaustralia.com.au. Um, you can call me if you like. Uh, you can call our office, 1300 FPV Australia. Oh, sorry, 1300 FPV Oz. It's down here. I can't remember the numbers for FPV Oz yet. It's not in my head, but there it is. 1300 FPV Oz. You can call us uh, or email us. Um, but uh, as I say, if, you, if you're new to the drone industry and you're wondering what all the, what all the hype is about LiPo batteries, this is it. They, they have the ability to be very dangerous. They have the ability to go off by themselves. Got first-hand experience with that, and my clients have too. And they have the ability to do nasty things if they're in the wrong place when they go nuts. Google it if you don't believe me, but hopefully this has given you a bit of an insight. Uh, other than that, um, we'll continue to pump out these, uh, these drone sense videos. I know it's been a while since this one to the previous one, but uh, time is all, always a problem in my organization, but not to worry. Again, uh, I hope this has been informative to you. And if you are going to fly a drone today, tomorrow, next week, or next month, please do, do so safely and responsibly. We really do need safe skies for all. Enjoy. Thank you.